I'm Jo, Jo Sumu. I'm over 50, but I always say that I'm over 25. I was grew up in Yango, very, very great neighborhood. People are very friendly and almost we felt like we know the whole village is there. But from carefree, if you like, I started noticing things, how things are changing. You know, Burma used to be one of the richest countries. In 1987, Burma became one of the poorest countries. We started learning and paying attention to the what happening and uh, around the neighborhoods and then started realizing the, the how poor we were and what lifestyle we have at the time living under the military regime. People were living under the fear, people were living under the oppressors. They would like to have a do something. They would like to get the freedom. In 1988, that is a time that they thought that look, all everything that military had done, we need to start asking for the justice. August 1988 is the one that we all call the nationwide pro-democracy uprising. So I was suggesting one one of the students who took part in there. crashed down very hard on the um, peaceful demonstration. Over 3,000 people were killed. They started arresting, they started closing down the majority of our officers. Uh, finally, I left Burma to the time of border, escaped to the border, stayed there for over and almost six years and keep fighting for the democracy movement. Unfortunately, in 1995, military occupied our headquarters. So literally, we had nowhere to go. Finally, became the refugee, and then came here under the passage of concern. All the people in, inside Burma, like my age at the time, all the youth, we lost our future. We lost our youth because we had to give up our study. We had to escape, and we were young once. It's a very tricky situation. Now the history has been repeated. Let's head back now to this developing story. It's just popped up in the last half hour or so in Myanmar with the military detaining the country's leader, Aung San Suu Kyi. The protests and violence have continued in Myanmar. The death toll now at 261 people. After hearing the news of the military coup, he said, you know, sometimes we didn't sleep until one or two because we were calling a lot of the friends and seeing the, all the footages. To be honest with you, you know, all the trauma came back. And my father, as we speak, in, inside Burma, he's 84 years old. Since the military coup, we cut the phone call. We never have a phone call. So I don't know how he is. Some of my friends died. Some of them got injury, some of them be arrested. And... But I am one of the lucky ones. Went to the border and then, then came here and having a good life. And got a job and, you know, beautiful wife and beautiful kids. Felt guilty, put it that way. Because people are suffering in, inside Burma, miserable. So now it is a time and for me to repeat that those debt, if you like. Now is the time and for me to be take part in the group and to get rid of them. So that is, I'm very proud. We did a lot of numerous um, demonstrations and campaigns and events in Australia. One of my friends contacted the Amnesty International and uh, we were supported to do the parliamentary lobbying in parliament. I stand before you in a land of freedom. Meanwhile, back home, a friend of mine who was just 17 years old, a medical young medical student who took part in a peaceful protest was shot dead. It could have been me. It could have been anyone we knew. It could have been someone you loved. And that is not okay. But one thing I must say here, I'm very proud. I would say that we got the chance when we started in 1988, we know that we can get rid of the military. We know that we were trying harder, but we haven't managed to get rid of them 
but it is a time uh, for me to restart and to finish and all the fulfill all the dreams that people of Burma have and I'm really glad that being able to part and take part in the death revolution again. We will fight and we will win.